Today I will tell you about the history of Corsica. Corsica has shared most of its history with Italy. Its people used to speak Corsican and Tuscan Italian. So why is it now French? And why is Corsica neither independent nor Italian? Corsica is a Mediterranean island and a region of France. It is south of the French Côte d'Azur, west of Italy and north of the Italian island of Sardinia. Like many Mediterranean islands, its history has been dominated by ongoing struggles for independence against waves of foreign invasions. Corsica shares a lot of historical ties with Tuscany. Corsica was originally occupied by people of Ligurian origin, later the Turian civilization who were linked to the Neuragic civilization in nearby Sardinia. The ancient Greeks established colonies in Corsica followed by the Carthaginians and the Etruscans. Corsica was an agricultural island producing sheep, honey, resin, wine and wax. Corsica became part of the Roman Republic from the end of the First Punic War around 237 BC. As the Western Roman Empire collapsed in 476, Corsica was invaded by successive waves of Vandals, Byzantines and then became part of the Kingdom of the Lombards. Pepin the Short, King of the Franks, ousted the Lombards on behalf of Pope Stephen II. During the 11th century, the maritime republics of Pisa and Genoa defended Corsica from the threat of a Saracen invasion, whose attacks had already begun in 713 AD. Corsica was hit by waves of immigration, largely from Tuscany, and this adapted the speech in northern Corsica to more closely reflect the Tuscan Italian on the mainland. This began to create regional variations across Corsica between the populated east and the rural west. Pisa's crushing defeat in 1284 at the Battle of Meloria helped precipitate the Pisan collapse while it was also cornered by Genoa, Lucca and Florence. James II of Aragon, having renounced his claim to Sicily, was granted Sardinia and Corsica in 1296 by Pope Boniface VIII. Genoese rule of Corsica from 1347 resulted in the political subjugation and economic exploitation of the local population. The Genoese unwisely sidelined the Corsican nobility and loaded the population with heavy taxes. Naturally, the Corsican people resented Genoese rule and numerous uprisings had to be put down. The Genoese rule of Corsica was contested on an ongoing basis by the Crown of Aragon, the local lords as well as the Pope. The Crown of Aragon ruled Sicily, Corsica and Sardinia from 1442. Genoa often paid France for troops to maintain order in Corsica, but very quickly the money was beginning to run out. In 1453 Genoa granted the administration of Corsica to the Bank of St George, one of Europe's oldest banks and the world's first public bank, and they did this in order to help pay off their debts. The Bank of St George did not hang around. It started taxing the Corsicans heavily, making very few allies doing this, and even caused some Corsicans to flee to France. In the 16th century, Corsica was a hub for Habsburg communications as well as a strategic naval base near the coast of France. In 1553, a Franco-Ottoman invasion of Corsica was resisted by an alliance of Spain, the Habsburg Emperor, Charles V, and Genoa, led by Andrea Doria. After years of clashes, the French finally granted Corsica to the Genoese Republic in 1559. The Genoans built a chain of defensive towers along the Corsican coast to defend the ongoing attacks from the Barbary pirates from North Africa. They also used these very same defensive structures to keep check of the rebellious 
Corsican population. Italy at this point was a group of separate city-states. Corsica and was beginning to develop its own identity, language, culture, etc. The Republic of Genoa was having none of this independent Corsica stuff and was paying an awful lot of money to keep control of the island of Corsica. By 1729 there was an all-out insurrection against the corrupt Genoan misrule. The Corsican Revolution for Independence from Genoa was led by Luigi Giafferi and Pasquale Paoli. After a prolonged struggle against the Republic of Genoa, Pasquale Paoli declared the Corsican Republic in 1755 with a constitution based on the liberal principles of the Enlightenment, almost entirely free from Genoa, apart from the defensive citadels at Calvi and Bonifacio. So we finally get to the nub of the question of how Corsica became French. Well actually you can blame the Italians, or at least an Italian city-state, specifically Genoa. Having lost control of Corsica, Genoa sold its claims to Corsica to Louis XV of France. Now, as you can imagine, pre-revolutionary monarchist France was not exactly a very good fit for the liberal island of Corsica. The Corsican Republic was eventually crushed by a large invasion by the French army led by the Count of Vaux and defeated at the Battle of Ponte Novo. Corsican aspirations towards sovereignty were smashed as Paoli and his forces went into exile. Britain, who had secretly supported the Corsican rebels, offered no military support whatsoever. However, they did view Corsica as a strategic asset and were enraged when France invaded Corsica. Corsican nationalist fervor was undimmed. Napoleon Bonaparte, who was born in 1769 to a minor noble Italian family. He was a French military and political leader who excelled during the French Revolution and the Revolutionary Wars. He led the French Republic from 1799 to 1804 and was also the Emperor of the French between 1804 and 1814. Napoleon implemented many liberal policies in France and this would influence Republican sentiment across the globe long after his death. Napoleon was forced to abdicate in 1814 and exiled to the island of Elba between Corsica and Italy. Returning in 1815, he was defeated at the Battle of Waterloo. The British now exiled him to the island of St Helena, far away in the mid-Atlantic, where he died in 1821, aged 51. Meanwhile, the exiled Pasquale Paoli lived in London. He spent his time networking and waiting for the right time to return to Corsica. As the French Revolution broke out in 1789, the French Republic started fighting every country in Europe, who in turn wanted to crush the very notion of republicanism. The Corsicans learned they were not strong enough to become an independent republic, but instead asked for more British support. In 1794, Pasquale Paoli led the British forces of Lord Hood to help free Corsica from French rule. The British, as a global sea power, were no real fans of the French Republic and saw Corsica, with its island ports near the French mainland, as a real strategic asset. This was merely a relationship of convenience. Anglo-Corsican forces ejected the French and briefly established a democratic Anglo-Corsican kingdom with the British King George III as the only Corsican monarch. Nonetheless, Pasquale Paoli continued to campaign for a republic rather than a monarchy, much to the annoyance of the British. As Spain joined the war on the side of the French, the British realised the game was up and withdrew from Corsica in 1796, and this caused the French to return, and Pasquale Paoli to go into exile again. When the Congress of Vienna in 1815 divided up post-Napoleonic Europe, they tried to reset it back to its pre 
French revolutionary state. France had bought it from Genoa and so on that basis Republican France could keep Corsica. Corsica had now failed to gain independence through the sword. It would now try politics. Corsicans typically spoke Tuscan Italian and sympathised with the national struggle in Italy known as Risorgimento. Rich Corsican families educated their children in Pisa in Tuscany. Garibaldi proposed to retake Corsica but this was refused as Italy at the time of the reunification did not want to fight France. Over time Corsicans did develop stronger bonds to France, the French language, the culture and the influence of the powerful French state. Of course they also enthusiastically sought well-paid jobs as civil servants and the well-paid opportunities of serving in the French army. The French also promised excellent job opportunities in far-flung places for poor Corsicans. The arrival of steamboats now also reduced the travel time between Corsica and the French mainland. The French government, as well as a pest infestation during the 1880s, extensively damaged a number of Corsican export industries, including wine and olive oil production. Poor Corsicans voted with their feet and began to emigrate to the French mainland and South America. Corsica suffered the highest ratio of deaths per region in France during World War I. The nationalist movement was outraged and demanded independence from an untrustworthy French state. Italian irredentism was the aspiration to reclaim traditionally held ethnic Italian lands. Italy was promised Corsica and a number of other territories if it joined World War I on the side of the Allies. But this was only partly delivered and this would cause significant future tension in Italian politics. During the 1930s, some Corsican nationalists preferred the thought of annexation to fascist Italy as a better alternative to staying part of France. Benito Mussolini, the Italian fascist leader, and was keen to annex Corsica. Naturally, the French had their own view. They clamped down on the aspirations for Corsican independence and irredentism. As France surrendered to the German Wehrmacht in 1940, Corsica was now ruled by the Vichy French regime. Corsica was also occupied by Italian and German forces in 1942. After the Italian surrender in 1943, the island was now French, covered in US airfields and being used to attack German occupied Italy. Corsican nationalism, the protection of Corsican culture and the Corsican language remain hot topics on the island. An armed struggle with the French government resumed in 1976. Corsica saw large protests and riots after Ivan Colonna, a nationalist leader, was murdered in prison in 2022. More recently, pro-independence parties have proved very popular at elections. Corsica enjoys significant autonomy the Département haute Courts, where the regional capital is Bastia, and the Département Côte du Sud, where Ajaccio is the capital. The local foods and drink reflect the history of Corsica. For example, Corsican charcuterie is highly prized. Prisotto, which is ham, panzetta, bacon, lonzu, smoked pork, figatello, pork liver sausage, wild boar, cinghiale and lamb. Corsican chestnuts are highly prized. There was a widespread chestnut production under Genoan rule and these nuts are eaten by the local animals and this produces a particular flavour in the meat. Chestnuts are also used to make polenta and cakes. Aquavita is a form of grappa. Red and white Corsican wines are known as Vino Corso and are a legacy of the Greek occupation. There's also Muscat wine and the Cap Corths aperitif. Things to see and do in Corsica. Or you can swim on a beautiful beach, for example Palombaccia and Santa Giulia. You can explore the dramatic coastline and countryside, for example the Bonifacio cliffs and caves. 
the hair raising Escalier du Roi d'Aragon, Aguil de Bavella, the Bavella needles. Go on a boat trip to Scandalo Na Nature Reserve. Of course, you should visit the citadels Bonifacio and Calvi. You can enjoy the wildlife at Il Lavezzi. You can also listen to the traditional local polyphonic singing. Buon viaggio. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like and maybe subscribe to the channel. That way you can enjoy more of this content. Thank you. Click here for some more videos you may be interested in.